Hi friends, it says I'm live. So welcome to today's live stream already. I got everything all set up. We are in the new craft room. So this is my first live I've done in here. I think I've, you guys have seen quite a few videos already, but I set everything up for the live and it looks like it's going to work perfectly. So let me know in the chat if you guys are seeing everything all right. I see so many of you guys already, and I am just so incredibly thankful for all of you guys. Marcy, Linda, Cecilia, Irma. There's so many of you guys in this chat. I recognize a lot of the names. There's Elizabeth too. Scrappa.com is joining me, so thank you so much for being here, and Rangers in the chat as well, which is just amazing. Today is a big day for the Christmas release. It's definitely my favorite time of the year. I love Christmas crafting and I love designing the products for Christmas. Um, it's just such a fun and festive time of the year. So the products release at 12.15 and we do that just to make sure you guys get to see everything before the floodgates open and you guys can go and shop as well. So. Hey everyone, Scrapper.com says everything looks great. You guys are liking the new craft room. Yay, I'm so glad that everything is working here and I can see all your guys' comments scrolling on the side, which is awesome. Um, so let's just quickly go through what happened. So yesterday the release was supposed to happen and I have been teasing two ink pad colors already um, and it was kind of a hectic morning. Um, I got my package of all the different products on Monday and you're like, well, that's a little bit late, right? Um, the package was supposed to come quite a bit earlier, but there was tons of delays in shipping. I'm sure you guys have gotten some packages lost in the mail and mine was kind of held up in shipping as well. So I had my samples here, which I was crafting with and absolutely loving. But then when I got the package, the ink pads were like super stuck and hard to open. Um, and so we were looking into it on Tuesday night. We kind of opened, or the factory team went in and opened a lot of my ink pads. And we were hoping that the problem was going to be small, but it ended up being a lot of the ink pad cases that we made. So we weren't going to sell those to you guys. That would not be right at all. So we're going back to the drawing board with that. We're seeing what kind of happened because, um, you know, we don't really know what happened with those right now, but we've decided to delay the ink pads until later on this year. So get excited because later you'll definitely get some new ink pad colors colors of Simon Hurley Create, maybe even more than two, um, which is really exciting. But today, this Christmas release is going to really shine on its own, and I hope you guys love it as much as I do. When is the tour of the craft room coming, someone said? Definitely soon, definitely soon. Um, I'll leave a link in the chat where you guys can buy the items at 12.15 when they go live. All right, guys, let's switch down to the desk and you guys can see the new release. So this is the brand new 2021 Simon Hurley Create release. It has three large 6x9 clear photopolymer stamp sets, and then it has three of the cling mount, and these are all peel apart stamps as well, which is just so exciting for me. So let's jump right into these. I'm going to first go through all of the stamps and kind of talk about why I designed them and different things like that, and then we'll walk into the projects and then we will walk into crafting. So yeah, there's lots to do today. It's definitely an exciting day. I haven't been live since the last release, which I think was two months ago. So it's exciting to be live again with you guys. So starting off with the first stamp set, and this one might be one of my favorites. Um, this year is definitely the year of the Christmas silhouettes in my stamp sets. You'll definitely see lots of silhouette images. And in the packaging, yes, the silhouettes are all black, but when they come in person, there's a lot you can do with them. Of course, you can stamp them in different colors. You could do lots of techniques with um, silhouette stamps, and they've been really awesome for me because whether you stamp them in black on a colorful background and really let them shine, or whether you go in and color them and do lots of details, like I said, silhouette stamp sets do a lot. So you guys might be noticing that these are kind of almost rectangular in size, and that is because they fit with the Simon Hurley Create stamping foam. And I'm going to walk you guys through this a little bit later in today's video. I have a feeling this one's gonna be popular, so when they go live, you might wanna grab it. It's definitely one of my favorite sets I've created, even so far, throughout my whole um, stamping line. So these are designed to fit absolutely perfectly with your stamping foam here. So when you create a stamping foam background, you can of course do lots of texture and lots of inks, but then on top, you can stamp these silhouettes, whether you do it in white heat embossing, whether you do it in gold, or whether you do it just in black 
um, jet black ink. It is really an amazing stamp set. So yes, that's why I designed these like this. It's because they fit on top of the stamping foam and yeah, they are just so stunning when you get to stamping them out. And then they have, of course, a bunch of littler images. You got some snowflakes and the star up there and then a bunch of different um, sentiments. So some that go along with the snowman and Santa and then some that go along with the nativity scenes. You have glory to God in the highest. You have a Bible verse up there. Um, sending good tidings of great joy, all is calm, all is bright. I love this one. Here comes Santa Claus. This one's super fun. Sometimes I like to do longer sentiments with smaller fonts. So this one says, wishing you and yours a wonderful holiday season and a blessed new year. So just such a fun stamp set. And I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. Sometimes it's hard to tell what you guys are going to like, but this one's definitely one of my favorites. All right, guys. So let's move on into the next stamp set. This one is called Handwritten Christmas. We've had a couple other handwritten sentiments in the line. Um, we had uh, the encouraging words, then we had the sentimental flowers, and now the handwritten Christmas. So this just has um, my handwriting in it and some really awesome Christmas sentiments in it. And let me compare these to an A2 size card base because I know that can be very helpful when you're looking at stamps. So they're pretty large of sentiments. They're not too big where they're going to just take over the whole card, but they're big enough where if you create a background or even add a little focal image, you can definitely use one of these underneath it, which is just awesome. Yes, I believe there's gonna be a full set bundle. And then in the stamp set, of course, we have a couple other silhouette images. Well, first off, we have this beautiful snowflake and it's quite large. Then we have this large kind of silhouette image looking here, and I'll show you in the samples. This one is actually a wreath, and it is so much fun to create. And like I said, it comes, you know, printed on this black ink, but don't let that fool you. There are so many possibilities to do with these images, and I can stamp this with green or whatever color. Then you got the holly berries and the image to fill it in, two little reindeer, the large image of Santa and his reindeer. That is almost as big as the A2 size card, which is really just awesome. And yeah, I love this stamp set. And I like that we added these other images to fill it in so that if you get this set, you really have a couple different focal images you can use along with the sentiments as well. And I wanted to point out too, um, sometimes we like to make things a little bit more versatile. So yes, you have this Santa flying through the sky already, but look at the size difference there. And it's not separated either. So that's why we wanted to do them separately too. And then we also singled out some of the reindeer. Um, there's lots of things that we did to kind of make them all work together and kind of coordinate. So yeah, you're gonna have some images kind of going throughout. And maybe you could make a set of cards with you know the different Santas or things like that. I think it would be super cool. All right, now moving on to this last set. This one is very, very Simon Hurley Create. Um, this one is called Oh Dear, and I love it. It really brings me back to the roots of the beginning of my line, Little Critter Images, and I will never, never, never stop doing these. Um, even though it, we might incorporate other things, like you saw those two sets, those are a little bit different than what I usually do, we will always stay true to our roots as well. So if you guys love the Little Critters, you're gonna love this stamp set. I think it's just so awesome. And these deer are adorable. Once again, let me bring in an A2 size card. You can see they're quite large. That's one thing that I like about when I design my stamp sets is they're on a six by nine photopolymer stamps. So they're quite large already. But then also the thing that I really enjoy about these is I like to make the images a little bit larger. Sometimes you'll see stamp sets with images like that big. And it's like, if they're that small, I have to put so many on here to fill the whole card up. But these you can really use as focal points by themselves. And then again, it's the year of the silhouettes for me. Um, I looked in my line and I found like no silhouette images and I was like, okay, we need to change that. So even in this set, we added two um, silhouette deer facing each other and then you have the two different size trees. And again, guys, it's not, not quite rocket science. We have taken these trees and drawn the whole thing I did and um, sized them up a lot. And there we have the tree images. So like I said, there's lots of um, coordination between the different sets that I think is really cool. But with these silhouettes, again, you can stamp them in black, create a really fun scene, heat emboss them, do some cool resist. You can even use them to create patterns on the background of the card. There's a ton you can do. 
And then um, with images like these critters, I've decided instead of making a sweater that you can stamp on, it really makes sense to just add these images on because then you can have several different deer in different outfits, but it's not a ton of work to cut out a scarf and put that on and then cut out a sweater and put it on. It's all in the image, which I think is really awesome. And then this deer, this deer is so much fun. It, it's got its head up, it's prancing around. I think that's just awesome. And then lots of different sentiments. We have, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Slay the day, which I thought was so fun. I love you dearly. You light up my life. Then we've got a bunch of little snowflakes going throughout the set. And then these two deer down here and wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Oh dear, Christmas is here in sweater weather. So just lots of fun images. Oh, and this little ornament, you can actually hang from its ears, which I thought was just fun to hang from those little antlers and uh, just a nice little touch to the stamp set. I always like to fill out all of the space so that you guys have the most to work with. So we go back and forth and sometimes try to fill in all these little areas to make sure you guys are getting the best bang for your buck, which I really think is so helpful when we're creating stamp sets to make it more versatile for you guys. All right, moving on into the peel apart background stamps. I am so excited about these. This one is called Festive Florals, and I have a thing for poinsettias. I did a poinsettia last year. It looks quite a bit different than this, and it was quite a bit smaller, but it had so much detail in it. Um, here, I went in and I drew a new poinsettia, which is quite a bit larger, and then I also went in and drew a bunch of other different holiday kind of sprigs. So you have different holiday leaves with berries, you have a little holly berry there, a pine cone, and uh, where's the other one? Right here. I love this longer one as well. And I didn't really base them off of anything. I just had a fun time drawing. Sometimes I'll just be up at 12 o'clock at night with an idea, and this was one of those nights. And um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Peel Apart background stamps, they are so awesome because if I flip these over, you can go in here, there's a large poinsettia image, which is just great for me to be able to stamp down on the cards and do that separately without having to mask anything off. And if you guys are familiar with our peel aparts, all you have to do is just stick them back in and they really easily slide back in there and fit perfectly. We have this one, which is that holly plant. Here we have another. Um, we have the pine cone that pops out, the holly berries. So we try to get every image in this set and then of course that poinsettia. So they all pop out of here. And there is just so much detail in these red rubber stamps too. I am a huge fan of how they stamp. I think that there's, you know, not much better than red rubber. If I'm trying to do something a little bit more detailed, I'll usually take the image and make it into a larger background stamp like this. And I love our peel aparts too, because number one, we try to make it as easy as possible to just fit back in with no sharp edges either. We try as best as we can. Sometimes on some designs it's hard to avoid, but, um, I think we do a pretty great job. So I'll stick those images back in. You saw how easy that was. Um, but I love these peel aparts because it's almost like you get all the different images and I'll show the cards that I created, but then you can also just stamp the whole background and get a really fun background too. So once again, a lot of bang for your buck with these. All right. So this is Stitched Snowflakes. And I named it that because if I pull it up close, Look at all of that amazing stitched detail in here. Is that not just the coolest? And like I said, red rubber, you really get all those amazing little details captured, whereas something like this, maybe in photopolymer, might not be as easy to do. So I wanted a big snowflake set like this, um, and I wanted to get as many details as possible. So we went with the red rubber 6x6 stamp. And guys, let me tell you, I had the hardest time drawing snowflakes. I avoided drawing snowflakes for the past two years, uh, the first two years of my line, because I was like, I, they never looked quite right. I could never get it down pat. And then one day I just decided I'm gonna sit down for as long as it takes for me to draw these snowflakes and create this background stamp because I need it. I need these snowflakes in my line. So I sat down and I drew all these snowflakes. It took me quite a while to do, but I think I finally got it right. And they're in a very elegant style too, which I think is really awesome. Um, like I said, there's a lot of elegant stamps in our line now, which I think is one of my favorite ways to create. Um, but then there's also the playful touch too, which is awesome. So moving back down to our desk, here are all of those amazing stitched snowflakes in this background. And yes, Mercy just said, Love this because you get one big background stamp, plus you get uh, several tiny stamps. It is really such a value. All right, so once again, lots of different peel-aparts in this. I don't know if I really need to take out all the snowflakes. Let me show you from the front side. 
And once again, they're really cut close to the snowflakes, as close as we can get them without doing any pointed edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know there's a really tiny one somewhere. Eight. Let's see. No, I think this is the smallest that we got. Yeah. Tons of little images in there. I love, and I love that we even cut out those two little ones because you might not usually get that in one of these background stamps, you know, or masking that off. But these little guys are just a game changer for creating little scenes. So, and then I love how they pop back in right into the stamp super easily. So yeah, these game changer for me um, to have snowflakes in my Christmas collection. Finally, I finally was able to draw them. <laughs> Carrie says, I love the snowflakes. It's my downfall. <laughs> All right. So this last one is definitely more in the Simon Hurley create style. I love saying that. It's You guys know when you see it. It's this hand-drawn kind of look, and it's definitely a little bit funky and playful. This one is called Funky Argyle, and I love it. You guys will see it in examples, kind of dressed up, and then as a more playful background. And, and different peel parts have different ways that we cut them out. In this one, we decided to cut out two strips because you'll see the pattern is offset here. So we wanted to give you two of them. So we cut them near the top. And we also avoided cutting them from the center anymore because when you stand your stamp up, we want it to be durable. Whereas I found when we cut them out from the bottom, sometimes it gets a little flimsy down there. So store your stamp like this and you'll be perfect. Um, so yeah, when you peel these guys out, you get that funky argyle. And we did it, you know, with a few little curves here so you can easily tell how to put them back in once you're done crafting with them. But the reason why we do it in lines like this is because some of the patterns, number one, are more cohesive to do in lines, but then also because I wanted you to be able to stamp the different lines in different colors. It's an argyle pattern, which I think is just so much fun. And uh, yeah, you can do this in different colors and I'll show you that in the examples. This one turned out so much fun. And I've been waiting since I designed this. I was like, oh my gosh, I need this in my collection. I love the pattern of Argyle, but I didn't want it to look too serious. And so this definitely achieved that. It's a lot more playful and just super fun. Once you're using that in your cards, I think you guys will get it. And like I said, sometimes when you see the black printing on it, you might get a little bit nervous because it looks so bold. But once you stamp it in colors, that really brings it to life. All right, someone said, um, I love the snowflake stamp with all the little peel parts. Yeah, it makes it so versatile, for sure. All right, so I'm going to now leave the comment in the chat. That is the link to go off and go shopping, guys. I believe they're up at the Ranger site right now. And one thing that Ranger wanted me to mention in the live too, is they're giving 20% off of some of the older Christmas products in my line. So if you add, um, for example, Brilliant Baubles, um, I think Caroling Squad is one of them. There's a couple of different Christmas stamps that I released last year and in past years that if you don't have them yet and you add them to your cart while you're buying the new stuff, you have to put some of the new stuff in your cart too, then it'll automatically give you 20% off in your cart. And if it's not coming up, it might not be one of the items, but I think Ranger has more information on their site and it's a very limited time sale. I think it's only going on for a day after this release. So do it while you can. All right, Ranger says they are up, so you guys can go through that link and check it out. Have fun shopping. Um, Bab said, I always love the products you release. They have so many ways to be used, not just for Christmas. You know, I agree with that. I love releasing products that are super versatile for you guys to make it worthwhile and worth your money because trust me, I was a consumer and I know. I know how much this hobby is, but you want to get the most bang for your buck when you are purchasing supplies. All right, so here is the first card. I used a little bit of craft card stock, and here I used the Stitch Snowflakes background stamp. And then I also used that um, Christmas silhouette, the Santa and the trees going above ground. But then you guys will see a background here but it's the inverse of this background. So that's the Stitch Snowflakes that is stamped into the stamping foam and then inked up to create our background. And then all I had to do was stamp down the silhouette on top, which is a really quick process. And there you have your finished card. Super easy, right? It's kind of mind blowing how easy this is. All right, so with that same set, I did the nativity scene. 
Here I actually went in and I taped off this. I stamped that separately so that it can be shiny with a little bit of gold embossing powder. And then I went in with the nativity scene and stamped that down in black. But first off, I started off with the foam. So I did the foam background here, but I didn't even, I didn't even press anything into the foam, right? Because you can still make stunning and beautiful inked backgrounds with just the plain foam itself, which is really awesome. So stamping foam, then the nativity scene, and then the sentiment, and that was a super simple and easy card. I didn't do the snowman yet because I think we'll be doing that in today's live. All right, next, let's move on into the Oh Dear stamp set. And throughout the, throughout the process of seeing these cards, you'll see other backgrounds. Like here again, you'll see the stitched snowflakes, which I white heat embossed, which is just beautiful. And then here is Oh Dear. I love this little guy. I colored him in. It's just adorable. I love this little reindeer. He's just prancing off in the distance. And then I added the sleigh in the background and add the sentiment Slay the day. You guys will also sneak peek. You'll see definitely the colors that were supposed to be released in all of the cards as well. So you guys get a sneak peek at the color that we're going to be releasing in maybe about a month or two. All right. Next, again, we have the Oh Dear this is the little guy with the sweater. I think he's just so adorable. Again, that's the new color. Isn't it just beautiful? You guys are going to just be amazed when you get your hands on those colors, I'm telling you. So then here is, again, that snowflake background. And here I did more of kind of a watercolor look with my inks. I really love how that one turned out with the snowflakes in the background. And like I said, like I was talking about, guys, look at all that amazing detail those snowflakes have. Like, do you see all that stitching in there? That is really only achievable with the red rubber and those peel apart stamps, which I think is just amazing. Yeah, the little faces, right? The little smiles are just so adorable. We didn't make their, we didn't make their mouths open because I know sometimes you guys get a little scared of that. So just those little smiles I think are just so darling. All right, next we have, um, this is using the handwritten Christmas, handwritten holidays maybe? Um, and so here I did the Merry Christmas and I stamped that in red. Like I said, don't get, don't get distracted by the black ink. You can always use whatever colors you want to. And then I stamped the wreath down and I stamped it three times and offset it. So all you have to do is just turn the wreath and stamp it in different colors. And it creates a really beautiful and full looking wreath on your card. And then of course you can add a bow or ribbon or whatever you want. And then also I used some of the background images from that same set. So I used the holly berries and the deer facing each other to create kind of a Nordic looking pattern in the background. All right, guys. So here is, again, that handwritten holiday sentiments. This one says happy holidays, which I just love. And then again, we use that wreath. I offset it, I think this time just twice stamped it down, and then here is the funky argyle in the background, and this is what I was talking about. You can make this kind of more funky and playful like this one, but you can also go in and make it a little bit more sophisticated, which I'll show you in another example here. Um, but isn't that just so awesome? So I did the red and green. It just gives off this really fun and playful vibe um, on your Christmas cards, and I am just obsessed with that background. And of course, with this argyle, use it all year long, right? You can use it whenever you want to because it's just that simple background. And I'll show you guys, you don't, it doesn't need to be super red and green in Christmas like this either. Argyle is really a pattern you can use all year. All right, so this one, I went in with a sentiment from, this is from the uh, Christmas silhouettes, but then this one is the larger Santa with his reindeer. That is from the handwritten holiday sentiment. So I love this one. And then in the background, you guys see, I did a really light resist with just a little bit of Versamark and then I inked over top of it. And that's how you get more of a subtle resist in the background. And then I kind of created a sunset and Santa is flying over the sky there. I love this one. Just so adorable. And that larger Santa, again, is a really simple way to just finish off your card really quick and easily. I think that's really what this release was all about. It's just quick and simple Christmas cards. But of course, you can step them up if you want to, too. So here I stepped it up. I used the festive florals and I went in and I painted these all in with my ink pads. So again, new colors spotted all over this, this uh, card here. Um, but I went in and I colored those poinsettias in, I colored all the leaves in, and then I did a wash over the background with a little bit of blue ink. And then here, that sending good tidings is from the, let me make sure I'm saying this right, handwritten Christmas. It's from the handwritten Christmas stamp set. I've been saying handwritten holidays this whole time. Yeah, that's from the handwritten Christmas. And I just love, 
I really spent a lot of time to perfect my handwriting in that stamp set so you guys get some really perfect and beautiful sentiments. Um, Connie, there's not a code for the 20% off. Um, you just will add this stuff to your cart and if it is an item from the older Christmas release that is eligible, it'll, it'll add it. So um, here we have the Posh Point Setas, or that was last year's set. Um, this is the Festive Florals, and here you can see I used the poinsettia. I fussy cut that out, right? I inked these up with my own colors. I colored these in with a little bit of my inks, and then I cut that out. I also went in with some of the other ones. This is why it's great as a peel apart stamp because you can stamp down, um, you know, a lot of the different images and then cut them out and tuck them underneath and create your own bouquet, right? Isn't that just so fun and stunning? I love how they look with those berries kind of sticking out of the poinsettia. You can really create your own spray of flowers. And then I went in with the hinge written Christmas, did that Merry Christmas and painted that banner in there. And then look, this is the Argyle background. And like I said, you can make it subtle and blend into your background with this. I think here it looks a lot more sophisticated and less playful. I really think it's a must have background. It's just adds a little bit of texture and, and fun um, color and depth and dimension, but it's not taking away from it. It almost reminds me of like a sweater in this instance, where you just stamp it tone on tone and get a little bit of color in the background. All right, guys, so there are all of the cards that I created. I didn't have a ton of time. Like I said, the package came in a little bit late, so I was, I was crafting up until the, uh, the end of it yesterday, until I thought I was going live. But uh, yeah, here are all of the different cards that I created. I think they are just so much fun. And there's a lot of different options when it comes to this release and all the things you could do with it. So once again, I'll leave a link in the chat. That link helps support me too. So if you guys shop through that link, it really helps support me. Um, but yeah, here are all of the different cards that I created. So I am excited to kind of get into crafting. What do you guys want to see? I think I'm going to show you the um, silhouettes first. But let me know in the chat what you guys want to see. I wasn't looking up too much, but I'm going to look up now and see all of your comments. Someone said, there is just so much goodness here. All your cards are amazing. I think the deer and snowflakes are my favorite. Well, thank you. I, like I said, had so much fun designing this release. It is just, it's always just such a blast to design Christmas products for me. So I had tons of fun creating this. All right, so let's go in first off with these snowflakes. I think I'm gonna use these with my foam. So we'll take the snowflakes and flip it over like this. With peel apart stamps, I always like to make sure that my stamp is kind of all pressed in. If you get any pieces kind of sticking out a little bit higher, it might mess up your impression with the stamping foam. So if you guys aren't familiar with the stamping foam, this comes in a pack of four. This has been restocked on Ranger's site as well. I think scrapper.com has it as well. So you can check it out there. This stamping foam is amazing. And maybe when you're, um, when you're ordering, you might want to add another to your order. And I'm not saying that just because if you already have stamping foam, I'm not trying to force you to buy any more. But the thing is with the stamping foam is sometimes when you use it a lot, let me grab maybe a piece. I don't know if I've used this one quite a bit. Uh, no, nah, this one's not too much. I think I used that only once to create that. But the thing with the stamping foam is when you keep heating it over and over, it's going to eventually kind of shrink and the corners are going to kind of go in a little bit and it's going to get smaller. Uh, and then it might not fit over top of your images perfectly. So that's why, that's the only reason I'd recommend picking up a new one. But if you have a pack of four already and you've kept a couple that you haven't used, this will be good for that too. It's at a great price point too, so it's not going to break the bank. All right, so let's go in here. I always like to grab one of my acrylic blocks here and you can use any acrylic block, but the reason why I do that, a little mint tape too for scrapper.com here. I love this stuff. I've been using it in all my videos. So the reason why I add things onto an acrylic block with this foam is because it's kind of a squishy surface. So on the edges, it kind of squishes and it's not giving you just a solid pressure all the way across. Whereas when we tape it down, to the stamping foam, it'll give us an even pressure because the, stamp, uh, or the acrylic block is a nice even and flat surface. It's nice and solid. So when you press on it, it's gonna give pressure all the way around, right? So that's where it's been really helpful for me with the stamping foam to get the most even image on all of the sides. 
Oh, Elizabeth, did you try using score tape? Yeah, I found, here's the thing, I found that the mint tape, this is not a plug for scarpa.com, but their mint tape is really awesome. I found that this was the best for me because I've tried other things that are either lower tack and when you heat them up, it heats the adhesive too much and it falls off. Or you might use score tape, which will ruin your acrylic blocks because it's a little too sticky. Whereas this, it'll come right off and it's not gonna ruin anything. It's not gonna ruin your acrylic blocks. It's not gonna ruin any surface, but trust me, yeah, I've been doing lots of testing with different adhesives, but yeah, this one, this one is it. All right, so I'm gonna go in. Yay, Elizabeth said she just placed her order. So many new goodies. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna heat this up for 10 to 15 seconds. Janine also said she ordered all the things plus more. Oh gosh, that's awesome. I hope you guys have so much fun crafting with these. I am just excited to see all of your projects. So heat it for 10 to 15 seconds. I'm using my Ranger Heat It Craft Tool here. You can use whatever heat tool you want. Um, but when it comes to other heat tools, they've got a little bit more of a concentrated surface. They're both putting out the same amount of heat, but this one I like that it's dispersed a little bit more. So it's gonna heat all across your stamping foam a little bit more evenly than another uh, heat tool would, where it's a little bit more concentrated. All right. We might have missed a little edge here, but of course you can always heat it up and try it again. But I think we're going to get a pretty good image. I'll put that at the bottom edge. All right. So we will go in. And all of these are designed to be used on their sides like this, all of the silhouettes. So let's see. I'm going to go in here with a little bit of breakup blue. You guys, I love breakup blue. It's one of my favorite colors. It's like this kind of more... How do you call it? It's like a basic blue. It doesn't have anything added. There's no like green in it. It's more of like a cool toned, just true blue, which I really like. And then we'll go in with a little bit of clear skies. Bring that in here. And then let's do a little bit of Remember Me, which is just a little tad darker than clear skies. And then to finish it off, I'll bring in a little bit of Midnight Snack on those top edges there. So fun, so easy too. Alrighty, so with this, I'm gonna give it a little spray. When you're spraying, I like to take my piece, you guys see how far I'm holding it away? And just do some solid mists, right? You see, I, I pulled this down fully. That's gonna give you the most solid mist and then holding it away is gonna make sure that there's only a little sheen on it, right? You're not seeing a bunch of water droplets. You're just seeing a little bit of shine. And I find that that helps transfer the ink a little bit more. It helps to make it more um, like solid and vibrant of a color, believe it or not, the water does. But also um, it transfers it a little bit better off of the foam. And the water, you wanna make sure there's not too much water because then you're gonna get too much of a watercolor look. Whereas this kind of helps keep the details a little bit more intact. And we want all the details with these snowflakes. All right, I'm gonna stamp that down, give it some good pressure. And like I said, this is where the stamping foam comes in handy because it gives an even all the way across impression where look how beautiful that is. I just love it. I can even go in here and zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see a little closer. All right, so that is the stamping foam if you guys haven't seen that before. And now I want to heat set this to dry it just because I want to make sure that my ink is going to sit on this really nicely. I'm going to bring in my Misty stamping tool here. And this is what I recommend when you're using these images, just in case if you have to stamp them twice, because they are so solid, I do recommend having a sort of stamp position or whatever one you like um, along with so that it's easier to stamp. And look, this is my, this is my set. Nice and well loved. You guys can see how much I've already been crafting with these. These are my original samples. All right, so I'm gonna go in with the snowflake image since I didn't show you guys that one and I think that'll work beautifully with the snowflakes. So I'm going to line it up. You can see through the bottom of your stamps. For me, it's a little bit more difficult because, well, I stained these so you can't see through them as easily, but you're gonna to wanna to line it up with that bottom edge there. I'm going to go in Add this down on my Misty. And then sometimes there's a little bit of like um, bubbles in your stamp if you don't press it down enough. 
So you can always press it down a little bit more and get all those air bubbles out. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but I find it helps change it a little bit. All right, now let's talk about inks. I'm gonna go in here with a black pigment ink. I usually always, always recommend the Jet Black Archival ink. You guys will see me using this in every single video. But when it comes to super, super solid images like this, I don't wanna do this in injustice. I love this for my watercoloring. I love it for pretty much everything else. I actually really don't like pigment ink because of how long it takes it to dry. But I want you guys to have the best results when you're stamping this. And I don't wanna stamp it a ton of times over and over too. So I recommend an ink like a pigment ink that's not gonna dry nearly as quickly. So I'm just gonna go in here and ink this up. All right. And then I'm gonna stamp it down. And you guys, I bought this ink specifically for this reason. I literally, I don't like pigment inks, but there's a time and place for everything. And for you guys to have the best experience with this, you know, these stamp sets, I do recommend having an ink that takes longer to dry, even though it's not always the best thing to have when you're trying to color things in and stuff like that. So even with this, there's a little bit missing here. It did a pretty good job, but I'm gonna go in and just do the center part a little bit more. All right. Just stamp down that center. There we go. All right, so you guys see that? And now when you pull it off, you don't want to touch that ink, right? You want to um, let this dry. No, I find that the archival ink actually, it'll sit on top too. Um, you, are, you are kind of right. You do see a little bit more of the ink through the archival when you're stamping it down. But um, no, the main reason for this is just because it takes a lot longer to dry, um, which is kind of a downside for me because I go in then, and guess what I do? My impatient little self goes in and heat sets this because I don't want to smear it, right? You don't want to touch that. It's a very inconvenient thing. but look how solid and black that image is. And guys, that is your card, right? Like that's how easy this is. And yes, he is definitely easy to mass produce. The thing that I love about this set is you get three of the different images in it, right? It's not like we're just giving you one with a couple different sentiments. So what if you guys created a, you know, you're bored with just creating one Christmas card all year, but you want to mass produce a couple, right? So stamp down your backgrounds with the stamping foam, then go through and do whatever ones of these you'd like. Because when you're doing this, you can have that image in your Misty and then just keep pressing it down, right? Because you can make as many Christmas cards as you want with this. So it is super easy and fun to do. And then all you need to do is go in. Let's see. What kind of sentiment do I want to use? I think I like this sentiment. Oh no, I like this one. Sending friendly flurries, that's cute. I love how I'm calling my own uh, my own sentiments cute. Guys, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen them in a long time since I designed them, but this is why I get so excited because it's like, I designed these stamps a while ago and it's like Christmas morning for me because I get to share them and use them in videos finally. And yeah, it's exciting. All right, so I'm gonna peel that little guy off. I'll add him back into the set in a little bit. And then I'll go in and let's see. I like it over here, but is that gonna show up? Well, we're gonna stamp it down. Oh, I like it down in this, this blue because it's a little bit lighter. And I like to use my Misty too with this just so I can make sure that it's nice and straight. Once again, we're bringing back in the OG, the archival ink, because this is my favorite for detailed things and stuff like that. And press that down. And look how crisp that is. So check that out, guys. Love it. Isn't that just so cool? And like I said, if you don't want your images to be black, you can always go in and heat emboss this. I recommend going in. Actually, should I do it? Should I just do it for you guys? All right, let's do it. So here, I'm gonna go in, we'll bring in the snowman again, because I think this is really the main image you would want to be, to be white, right? Because he's made out of snow. 
So I'm going to go in here. I think this is important to show too, because your inks, right? All of these inks, whatever background you stamp down is going to have a dry time. I like my inks because technically they're like set, right? Like you're not going to smear a lot of stuff. They pretty much sink into the cardstock. But the thing about my inks and really every other ink on the market is when you create a background like that, the ink is still sitting underneath the surface and it's still got a little bit of moisture there, right? So the cardstock is not just the dry normal cardstock anymore. It's got a little bit of moisture in it. So that means that you're not going to be able to heat emboss over it. Otherwise, all that heat embossing powder is going to stick everywhere on your projects. So this is where this tip comes in handy. I've added my snowman down here and let's bring in a piece of my cardstock. We're doing it on the fly. I didn't have these, all these things out, but I decided this is important to show you guys. So I don't know how lined this up is with the center of the cardstock, but we can always cut it out. I'll show you guys a tip for that as well. We'll go in with our Versamark ink. I'm going to also grab my white embossing powder out. Alrighty, so we got everything kind of ready to do our stamping here. I'm gonna go in with my clear sticky ink, whatever your favorite is. You wanna make sure too that once you're done using black ink on these, clean, clean them because if you're going in with like a clear ink like this, you don't want it to get messed up by your black ink pad. All right, give it good pressure on the top of it. Oh, everybody in the comments said do it. <laughs> That's hilarious. You guys are awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, we got we got what I thought we were going to get. I didn't clean this off well enough, but go in with some stamp cleaner. Clean off that. The thing about um, clear inks like this is it's going to react to whatever ink you do have left on your stamp because of what's in it. But we're going over with white embossing powder, so I don't think this is going to make too big of a deal. But yeah. Clean your stamps better than I do. You guys, I've been really bad at cleaning stamps lately. I don't know what it is, but I've just gotten kind of lazy about cleaning. I usually just use water now. All right, and then I'll go in and throw a little bit of white embossing powder over top. All right, that looks great. And we're gonna, now we're just gonna go in and heat set this. All right, so there we have it heat embossed. I mean, you could definitely see a little bit of that gray underneath, did I not? I missed a section. You can definitely still see a little bit of that gray poking out underneath, but hey, snow is not always super clean anyway, so this is awesome. Oh, um, I, I already stocked up on embossing powder. Everybody's making embossing powder jokes because I just didn't stock my white embossing powder for the longest time. Yeah, I finally bought some um, white embossing powder, so we're all good on that. No need to send me any unless you want to. Um, okay, so then let's go in, let's use the same thing. Let's use the, the snowflakes here. So we've got this white heat embossed. This is a plastic coating on top. Um, so what we can do now is we can go in and stamp on top of it and that plastic coating is gonna wipe off with the ink. So I'm gonna go in here, let's do, Let's do a little bit of different colors. I'm gonna go in with some sidewalk chalk, which is this light purple color. And then we'll go in, let's do a little bit more clear skies. We'll go in with some of the normal blues. Alrighty. And then last but not least, a little bit of midnight snack. All right, and when you're using your stamping foam, I always recommend to rub the ink on instead of pouncing it like a normal ink pad because um, I find that that helps to transfer the ink better. And then also if you want to kind of blend these colors together in between and make sure there's no harsh marks, 
especially in between a color change as drastic as this one. You can go in with your blending tools, little mini foam blending tools, and blend those out. All right, same thing guys, back to spraying. Far away and fine mists. So there we go, you guys can see on there, just a little bit of fine mist. Y'all don't see any globs on there. And then what I'm gonna do is you'll see these bottom two corners. These are what I like to line up with what I'm looking at because they're super easy to line up, right? So we're gonna take that corner. Oh, maybe I'm, take, maybe I'm going back on my word because I'm on video now. Everything on live is harder than it is in real life. All right, so I lined it up with those bottom two corners. Press it down. And there we have our background. Now you guys are like, oh, well that's kind of ugly, right? You stamped over top of that snowman, but just give it a second. So then when I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna bring in a little microfiber cloth like this. Notice how I'm not using the super dirty one anymore. And all I'm gonna do, you're gonna wanna move the cloth around as you do it too, is go in, because we're trying to not impact the rest of the background at all, right? You don't wanna get, you don't wanna push the ink out to the white area. So I'm gonna keep moving that cloth around and just lifting off that color. And because it's dye-based ink, mine is dye-based, water-based ink, you're not gonna get it on top, right? If you use a permanent ink, you're gonna definitely have a little bit of staining and you don't wanna do that. So stamping over top of the embossing powder with an ink like mine, will give you that really awesome look. So there we have our white snowman. Of course, if you wanna use darker colors, you can make it a little bit more of a drastic look, um, but I like how this looks. I think it's kind of adorable. It's totally a different way to do it. Do I like the black better? I do like the silhouette a little bit better, but like I said, if you wanna make it look like snow and you're kind of scared of just all black look, go with this. And then another tip with the stamping foam, this one is, quite important because look how janky this looks, right? So all I'm gonna do, bring in my paper trimmer. I like this one from Tim Holtz and Tonic. And I'm gonna go in and we might have stamped this crooked, right? So I'm gonna take this edge of my stamping and line it up with this plastic guide right here. There's some points on the plastic guide where it's pretty easy to line it up. You can go directly to the edge of that guide and then cut. And what that's gonna do is give you a nice border. And then as you go around, just line it up with the exact same spot. Make sure that you're moving that guide just as you did earlier. And this is going to give you an even border all the way around your card, your rectangle there. Now, could you use coordinating dies or like a die set with rectangles? Of course you could use a die set with rectangles, but this is super an easy way to get that border. And of course you could also chop it right up to the edge too. So yeah, love that. It's a mixed opinion. Some of you guys like the white more, some of you guys like the black more, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys because um, you get two completely different effects. All right, yeah, if people have questions about the sales, thanks for handling that in the comments, Ranger. Um, I know there's probably more info on Ranger's site about it as well, um, but the sale is on the older products if you add new products to your cart. All right, so what should we do next? Should we go in, let's see. I want to show you guys some peel parts. So let's first go in with the funky Argyle. So um, I'm gonna go in here and bring in this Argyle stamp. I really love this one. And then I'll bring in a large acrylic block. Here we've got one. Anything will do, but just a large kind of plastic surface like this. And then I'm gonna bring in my Spark White cardstock. Now I originally did this with my two new colors, but let's go in and pick some different ones. Let's go in with this, let's do a little festive color scheme. Oh, this is kind of weird, but I kind of like this color scheme. Oh, maybe we'll add like, maybe we'll add a purple in there too. Weird, but kind of cool. I could see that being a sweater. Okay, so now we'll go in and starting off with a little bit of crown meat. I'm gonna bring that color in. Ink it up. And then you can stamp it at an angle. 
I'll stamp it at an angle just because I showed it straight up and down earlier. You guys can see some different looks. All right, so once I'm done with that, the reason I clean things so much with water now is because my ink is water soluble. So my ink is super easy to clean with just water, which is one of my favorite parts about it. All right, so then we'll go in with a little bit of Tropical Tango next. Oh, this ink pad, it has so much ink in it. I forgot. Guys, I re-inked this one and I over-inked it so much. So only put as much ink as you need in it. And if you also do over ink it like I did, what you can do is go in and wipe off some of the ink on a paper towel or you know do some backgrounds with it to, to get rid of some of that ink. But this, I gotta be more delicate with and just do really light taps to get that color on. My ink pads are not usually like this. Ranger usually adds like the perfect amount of ink in them. But I've had mine for years and I use them every day. So I had to, yeah, re-ink it in. Look at how much I over-inked that pad. Well, moving on to the next color, right? It's live. So we're gonna go in, spray that down and clean it off. Then we'll go in with a little bit of red. This is Bee Sting. Like I said, the perfect amount of ink in these pads. That's what I like about how Ranger makes theirs is there's usually like when you get it, there's never too much ink in it, which is one of my favorite things because you can be as heavy handed as you'd like and you're still gonna get all of the amazing details in your stamping without it over inking. Then this is part of the pink family, so we'll go in right over top of that red and ink it up. So isn't this pretty cool? And then yeah, we can go in with more pink at the top. Stamp it down. And then last but not least, we'll use a little bit of red right above. Yes, if you guys are asking about die cuts, there are digital dies on the website. So if you guys have one of the digital machines like a Cricut or Silhouette, those are really great and you can purchase the digital die on the same page as the stamp set. All right, and there is that background. It's kind of untraditional colors for Christmas, but like I said, this doesn't have to be a Christmas background or a Christmas card altogether. You can really use this for any different occasion, um, whatever kind of way you want to make it. And this is kind of a playful and really simple background. So here I did it on the edge. Like you guys saw in my examples, you can do it straight on and do more of a Christmas effect like this. And then you can also go in and do more of a tone on tone for more of a sophisticated look. So lots of different easy ways to create with that stamp. I just wanted to share that. That's why we do it in stripes like this. So all different peel aparts have different kinds of cutouts. And I find that with backgrounds that are horizontal like this, it's really easy to get some cool cutouts by um, cutting out the lines in the background. All right. What do you guys want to see? Yell it off in the comments while I'm, while I'm cleaning my stamp here. Clean off everything quickly. And then you guys can decide what I show next. Guys, I swear I lose things in here so easily. Here, here it is. It's not even like messy in here right now. And I just, I shove things on my desk like over in the corner and then I just never find them. <laughs> so there is that funky Argyle background stamp. Just so super cool. Even though we had a couple issues with my ink pad that I over inked. <laughs> All right, I sent that off to the side. Someone's, okay, lots of people are saying, let's see the deer. All right, 
Let me show you guys the deer. This is one of my favorite sets. So this one is called Oh Deer, and these deers just have so much fun and beautiful personality in them. Should we watercolor? Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I think I'm gonna use the deer with the sweater. That's just adorable. That is just so cute and fun. All right, so I'm gonna take him out and I'll go in with an acrylic block. And I'm gonna give you guys all of my watercolor secrets here. Yes, I'm using the reindeer, yep. I'm gonna give you guys all my watercolor secrets in today's video. So, yep. Um, so you're gonna have to, if you guys just joined, at the beginning of the live, I kind of explained there's no new ink colors this time. We had a little bit of a mishap with the ink, but we're working to fix it and the ink should be back in about a month in a different collection. All right, look, and we're back to using some archival ink for our watercoloring here. Like I told you guys, this is my fave. And I like it because it's waterproof. So I'm gonna go in here, stamp that down. And here's what I love about archival so much and why I use it. I use it because it's quite quick drying, but then also I do a lot of watercoloring pretty often and it stays wet just long enough for you to throw over a layer of clear embossing powder like this. And then we can heat set this and you get clear borders to help keep the water in. So that is my first watercolor tip. Make sure you add heat embossing over top of whatever ink you use. Um, if it is a black ink that dries quicker, you might have to throw over, um, throw over a layer of clear sticky ink beforehand. But yeah, this is, why I love Jet Black Archival so much. All right, then I'm gonna go in and heat set this. All right. So yes, there is my little deer in his sweater. I'm going to cut this down so I can create a palette and keep everything on the screen here. Scrapper.com said that they're taking notes on, um, on the watercoloring. Yeah, guys, these watercolor tips, they're pretty simple. Like even that clear um, embossing powder, it's a simple tip, but it makes the biggest difference, um, especially if you're just starting out in watercolor and you wanna make sure everything is perfect. This just helps everything stay in the lines and not bleed as much. Yep, that's what the clear embossing is for, for anybody asking in the chat right now. All right, and then I use um, these brushes. They are pretty inexpensive. They're from Ranger. Um, I'm not a brush fanatic. I don't really care what I use too much, but these I've found are some of the best. They're just nice fine points. I use the four and the two, and they come in a pack. They're Ranger Artist brushes. What I like about them is they don't cost too much, so if I ruin my brush, I don't have to worry about it. That's how I look at brushes. <laughs> So I'm gonna go in, spray down a little water off to the side. I do this on my craft sheet because I like to not have my water spill all over the place. Ask me how I know. So I have that little tiny puddle and it's not gonna dump over and ruin everything else. It's a good tip. So then I'm gonna go in and let's see. I'm gonna give him a, oh, I know a color sweater. Okay, here's what we're doing. I'm gonna give him a little green sweater, but we're using Psych, which is gonna give him kind of a neon yellow sweater. And then I'm gonna use Tropical Tango, which once again, too much ink, <laughs> but it'll be fine for watercoloring. And then I'll go in with a little bit of Gur for the deer. And I press down quite a bit because um, here in this kind of trail, you're gonna have lighter color. And then wherever you end that color, it's gonna give you kind of a darker color, which I'll show you in a second why that's important. And then, last but not least, or actually not last, we're gonna go in with a little over the moon, which kind of brightens things up. And then, a little bit of rosy cheeks, because, well, we want his cheeks to be rosy. Isn't that the perfect name for that color? It literally just is exactly what it does. All right, so, looks like I didn't clean out my brush before. Love that. <laughs> so we'll make a new puddle of water that's clean. That's the nice part about it too. Once your water gets too dirty, sop it up with whatever towel you're using in your craft room or paper towel or whatever, and then bring in new color. 
All right, so when I watercolor, I get a little bit of water on my brush first. I'm actually just watercoloring on my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. I find that it works, but if you wanna switch over to a water intensive cardstock, you can. But I like to go in for the first layer with just water on my brush. And this happens to be a little bit of pink water because I didn't clean my brush, but it's totally fine. And this is just going to saturate my cardstock with a tiny bit of water. You can see I didn't use a ton of water. It's not puddles or anything like that, but it's just enough to get that cardstock ready to take more water, right? Because if we go right in onto the surface with our color, it's gonna just sink right into the cardstock because that cardstock had no moisture on it. So it's just gonna suck the color right in. Whereas with this, it allows the next layer of color to kind of sit on top a little bit more and it has time to blend a little bit more. So you'll see we're not getting harsh marks here. We're getting a pretty even coat of our first layer of color. So look at that, we're not getting harsh marks. Nothing's sinking in too fast. It's because of that first layer of color. And I find that that's why a lot of people might complain about coloring with inks, but that's really the problem is that you're not adding that water down first and your, your cardstock isn't ready to take whatever you're ready to put on it, right? So go in with more water, that's a little too much, but watercolor is pretty forgiving where you can go in and kind of remove any anything you don't like. And then we'll bring in a little bit of color. And, and this is why I like brushes too. I don't love using an intensive amount of water with my color. So water brushes would kind of screw me up before because it'll throw out however much water it wants to, right? That's one thing with water brushes. It's got a mind of its own. Sometimes it'll throw out a ton of water when you want it. I mean, when you don't want it. And then sometimes it'll throw out no water when you want it. Whereas this, I'm going in and I'm so easily able to control how much water is coming off of my brush at one time. And you can see for, for the most part, not a lot of water is coming off my brush this whole time. I'm pretty much just using a tiny bit of water the whole time because I find that we don't want puddles, right? We just want a sheer layer of color down. All right, so that is our first layer of color for our deer here. First layer, all done. Then we're gonna go in with just a tiny, tiny bit of water, barely any, but just enough to keep the brush moving. And we'll dip into the darker part that doesn't have any water in it yet of our ink there. That's what I was telling you. That part's important because then we can go in and add a little darker shadow wherever we want on our deer to add a little bit more depth and dimension. So here I'm gonna add that darker shadow where his sweater meets his body. And this is why it's important to not have too much water because if I added a ton of water onto an already dry surface, it's gonna re-wick that ink, right? But we don't wanna do that. So I'm just going in tapping a tiny bit there and then we'll go in and add our color down. And if you want to kind of soften out whatever edge you had, go in with a tiny bit more water and blend it out a little bit. And I don't worry too much about shadows and depth and dimension, but wherever any part overlaps or meets another part, you might wanna add a little bit of shadow. So here, for example, where his leg meets his body, that's gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. It's not super scientific when I do it, but you do wanna add a little tiny bit of depth and dimension here and there. And then if, if a part is a little bit too light or like missing a little bit of color, you can always add some shading in. And look, I'm just feathering that right into the old color, not too much water there. And look, look how much difference that creates, right? When you add that little extra bit of dimension on there, it creates a huge difference. All right. Same thing here, moving on in, adding down a little bit of darker shading, depth and dimension. Sorry guys, I'm not looking at a ton of the comments right now, but I'll look up in a second for some questions. Um, just because when I'm watercoloring, you got me focused over here. But you guys asked me to color the deer, so. So I'm gonna go in with then a little bit more of that color and blend that out. Up at the top of his head, maybe up here, we'll add a little bit more of that. Blend it out with a little bit of water. All right, and then we'll add some down at the bottom here too. Just a little bit of depth and dimension. And you guys can see that just that little touch of color adds so much to an image, which I think really just is amazing. So don't be afraid to go in and add a little bit of shading. You guys can see when you first add that shading on, look how scary that looks, right? It's, it's that really super dark color against that lighter color that you already have there. But it doesn't have to be super scary because watercolor is 
just so forgiving of a medium that, you know, you can always blend it out, you can move it around, and you don't have to be too worried about how it's going to turn out because watercoloring is very forgiving. All right, so then let's go in with the antlers. Here, like I said earlier, I like to mix a little bit of over the moon with a tiny bit of gur, and that's gonna give us, well, that was a little too dark. That's gonna give us a lighter color, which I can go in and shade those antlers in with. Just a little bit of a lighter kind of tan, tannish brown color. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Go in. And shade that in. All right, now before everything gets super dry on the deer, I'm gonna go in with just a tiny bit of rosy cheeks, and if you want to, you can tap a little bit of pink to his cheek, and again, scary, right, to add all of that color in, pretty solid. But then I'm gonna go in with just a tiny bit of water and blend it out. And if you need to, you can go all over, just so that you don't get any weird watermarks. Right, and that just adds just that touch of pink to its cheek. Super fun. And then I'll go in with a little bit of, let's do a little bit of red. We'll have him be, we'll have him be Rudolph for the day. And we'll go in with the red nose. All right, so then for the sweater, the sweater should be pretty easy to do. And then we'll be done with our coloring lesson. Oh, you guys are talking about how it's easy to get sucked into the inks. Yeah, the inks are just so much fun. They work with so many different things, blending and watercoloring. Again, I'm gonna go in with straight up water first, prepare the surface. And yeah, like I said at the beginning though, um, this is just my stark white cardstock that I use. A lot of people ask if I switch over to watercolor cardstock. I don't find the need to because you can see that I'm not using a ton of water, so it doesn't really affect the surface of my cardstock too much. But yeah, if you want to be more water intensive, I'd move over to a watercolor cardstock. But my, my cardstock takes water pretty nicely, which is one of the things I liked about it. All right, we're going in with Psych. This one is a bold pop of color, and that is why I love it. I love Psych. And yeah, don't be afraid to bring in color because it'll dry down a little bit. This is just adorable. You guys can kind of see it looks quite a bit yellow right now, but it's kind of a mix between yellow and green. It's got a little bit of both colors in it. I like to use it for leaves and Christmas time too. So this is a fun little colored Christmas sweater. And then another thing you could do is instead of going in with just the darker tone of that same color, you can go in with a darker color. So here I'm using a little bit of that tropical tango. You can see I'm literally just barely touching the edge there because I only want a tiny bit when we first go in and we'll bring it onto the edge there. Look at that scary color, scary, scary. But then we can go in and kind of start blending it out a little bit. If you need to wipe your color off to the side, wipe it with some water and just blend those two together. I think there's still a little bit more of that green in my brush. Just blend that out. We're just creating a little bit of kind of like an ombre on his sweater there. And if you want to, you can kind of blend it in a little bit easier with just a little bit more of that yellow color. Like I said, watercolor is pretty forgiving. So if you go back and forth with different colors, it's pretty easy to do. All right, we'll shade down these little edges too with a little bit of that color. A little bit of tropical tango. I love these two colors together. They create just a beautiful green in between like that. All right. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll add a little bit of tropical tango and we'll blend it out with just a little bit of water and a little bit more psych. And last but not least, we'll bring it from his bottom sleeve. Guys, you got me all focused on my watercolor now here. Sometimes it just goes completely silent because I'm focused too much on what I'm doing. But yeah, bringing that color in. Look how easy that is. If you want to, go in with a little bit more of that color and a little bit more water to blend everything out. All right, so there we have our finished coloring of our little deer. 
And he is from the Oh Dear stamp set. Yeah, he's even more cute colored, right? Isn't it a good thing that I colored? Colored him in so you guys can, can see him all colored. He is absolutely adorable. So yeah, let me, um, let me know what you guys, if you have any questions about the coloring or anything like that. Um, because now I am finished. So I can kind of answer some questions and look up a little bit. Here, I just like going in with the Ranger Heat It tool. Like I said, different tools for different purposes. I like this one for drying inks and heating up my stamping foam. That's where this, this heat tool comes in handy. And there is that adorable little deer. And like I said, the color will kind of dry down a little bit, dry back a little bit when you um, heat set it. And I wanted to kind of show that. So if you were a little bit worried about how bright it was, it does dry down just a tiny little bit. And we'll go in here and if you want to, you can go in and take a print, but red and green mixed together with water is gonna usually just give us brown. So I'm not gonna do that. All right, our little deer. I'm not gonna do a whole card with this guy, or should I? Guys, maybe I should. Maybe we should just keep going. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Some people stream for two hours anyway, so. All right, so when I cut him out, I'm gonna go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. Um, so we can go in and cut this out. And I like to just go around the edge and leave a little bit of a white border. The reason why I like these Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors is because they are pretty small, right? They get into a lot of these details, but also they've got that spring so it can pop back out at us and your hands won't get tired as you're cutting. So if you guys don't like fussy cutting, I recommend these scissors. They are awesome. Everyone's saying yes, let's make them into a card. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, guys. We're here for the long haul. <laughs> I'm just having too much fun to end it right now. All right, so I'm going in and just fussy cutting them out. Now, I saw a question about those solid deer in this set. The solid deer in the Ode Deer set are not the same size as these deer. The reason being is because they aren't meant to color in these guys, right? They're meant to just stamp as little silhouettes. And in fact, I had the idea for them to actually stamp into the stamping foam. And I'll maybe show that in a future video or to do a stamping foam background and to have those guys be in front of it. So that's kind of what the idea was for those silhouettes or just to create an inks background and, and stamp them down with some, some trees and have those silhouettes in front. I don't know, I just think, I think the silhouette images are pretty cool. And you can also stamp them in a bunch of different colors and have them facing each other. So, lots to do with those, but unfortunately, no, they do not line up with the deers in the set. All right, so going around his antlers, I just go, like here are some, some good tips on fussy cutting. I don't always go into those tiny little details and you don't need to either. Just go kind of around, always give it some rounded edges and avoid those areas that are super duper detailed. So even these antlers are pretty easy to cut out because we're just going in and out but we don't need to get every single little detail. All right. And I leave this little bit of a white border too, so that there is room for error. The thing is, if you cut up too close to the line, sometimes it can go into the image, you can ruin the image, where is this, if my little bit of a white line starts getting bigger in some areas or smaller in others, it's not super noticeable. And anyways, it's handmade, so yeah. I think they're gonna appreciate it no matter what. All right, so I'll look over for questions. Oh, I see everyone just saying Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors in the comments. Yes, that is exactly what I'm using to cut these out. All right, we are almost done with this. And then we will move on to the background. All right. So that finishes off that. I love how that turned out and how it looks here. I think it is just adorable. Now let's go in with a piece of colored cardstock. I know what color I want. So I'm gonna get up here and grab it out. I love this cardstock color. 
It is from Gina K and it's called Fresh Asparagus. And you guys, Gina's colors, um, they work well with my inks, which is kind of cool. So a lot of these colors work well. I like this one, works well with fake plants. So I can do some easy tone on tone stamping. Oh, now we're all complimenting my fussy cutting. I am decent at fussy cutting. It's become, it's become something that I've actually not minded doing. I know a lot of people don't love fussy cutting, but a lot of my images aren't super detailed, which makes it really easy to just go in. And like I said, you don't need to go into all of the little like antlers, but the rest of it is a pretty, pretty easy shape and, and smooth to cut around. All right. So with this, I think I'm going to use the Funky Argyle. Guys, like I told you, this is one of my faves and it's just so fun and playful. So with this one, I'm going to go in and this is the color that right now I find matches the most with this cardstock. Um, in the sample, I actually used the new color, but like I said, <laughs> that'll be out later on this year. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of fake plant, ink this stamp up, and I start off usually by like kind of twisting the ink pad around a little bit. That's gonna give you some good ink on your surface. And then once you've kind of covered your basis, you can then go in and kind of tap that ink out and smooth it out all over the place to make sure the whole thing is covered. And I think that's enough for my A2 size card. All right, so then I'm gonna go in, take my card base here. This is one of my favorite colors for the, for the holidays is just this green. And then we'll go in and I'm using just a little pressure tool to press down on all sides and get some good even pressure without anything moving around. I find that that's pretty helpful. And then when I lift that off, you can see that beautiful background that we get. I love this funky Argyle stamp it. Like I said, it almost looks like a sweater and I thought that that would be just completely and totally adorable with our little deer on top of it. All right, I think it matches his vibe of his sweater. Just kind of funky, a little bit of a fun and unique color for Christmas. I don't always like to keep it super traditional with Christmas. I don't always like to go just red and green. I use sometimes bright colors and blues and stuff like that to really keep it changing. All right, so now let's go in. I'm gonna pop this guy up. So I'm gonna use a little bit of foam squares and we'll just go in and grab a little bit. I actually ran out of my foam adhesive, so I've just been using these foam squares to add them down. Alrighty. So I've just got a few here. And I find that these actually work for these littler images. They work really well, because um, you don't need a ton. You don't always need a ton of foam tape and you don't need to cut it down really, which just makes it easy. All right, so we'll go in here. We'll peel these guys off. I love that we're finishing the whole card today. Usually I just share a bunch of examples, but I thought it'd be fun to share a little bit of coloring and share a look at kind of a lot of the different sets. So we went over the silhouettes, now we're doing the deer, and those sentiments are pretty, pretty awesome and self-explanatory. All right, so let's test out what sentiment I wanna use. I always like to go in with my set and I'll just like bring the set in and look at what I wanna use. Oh, that is it. Oh dear, Christmas is here. That's the sentiment. Sometimes you just know right away what's gonna work best and I think that that is adorable for this card. All right, so I'm gonna kind of center him. I'm gonna center uh, his feet kind of right in the center of the card stock. And we'll tear that down. If I need to add a little bit of foam tape more after, I will. The reason why I also cut it with a little bit of a white border is because if you add it onto a colored card base like this, that white is gonna make it just stand out off of the card and really shine. It really sets the image apart from the background. So that's just yet another reason why. You might wanna leave that little bit of a white border. All right, so this sentiment is it. Oh dear, Christmas is here. Oh, there's also that sweater weather sentiment, but. This is what we're using today. We're going in with our sentiment acrylic block from my acrylic block set. And then I'm gonna go in with 
Let's see, do I have a scrap? Yep, a scrap of cardstock. Bring in a little jet black archival ink and stamp this little guy down. Isn't that just such a fun little sentiment? I think it is. I'm gonna make sure to dry it so that nothing moves around while I'm cutting it out. And then, I think I'm just gonna cut straight around this. And to do the top part, I wanna make sure that it's completely straight. So I'm gonna grab a larger scissors. I like these shears and just go in right across there to make sure that we get a nice little strip. And then same thing, I'll go in and add some foam squares. Alrighty guys, that just about wraps up our card for today. I'll add down our sentiment. Throw it down onto our card here. And that finishes things off nicely. It's pretty simple. You can always um, snazz it up a little bit with you know, background or anything like that. But I wanted to keep it pretty simple for today's video just to really highlight and spotlight that deer in the card because I think he just turned out so adorable with all of that fun coloring that I was able to share with you guys and all those different tips for getting some really beautiful watercolor effects. So I'm going to bring in all of the stamps one last time here so I can really show you guys the complete collection and release all together all the different stamp sets. I hope you guys really enjoyed this release as much as I did and all of the examples that were created with the stamp sets. I think this release was just so much fun and although we couldn't do inks today, I think this really was just a collection in itself, which was awesome. So I'm gonna go back in the chat one last time if you guys are still here and thinking about shopping. This link that I'm gonna leave in the chat helps support me and that is a link to my full new release and also all of the rest of my Simon Hurley Create products. So one last look at the release. I thank you guys so much for joining me in the live today. I can see all of your amazing, amazing comments. It has been an hour and 21 minutes and um, I am off for the day, but I've had just so much fun sitting down and crafting with you guys. We might have to do these lives a little bit more often because I think they are just so much fun to create cards and, and chat with all of you in the live stream. So I hope you guys enjoyed those watercolor tips and seeing all of the amazing projects and everything that we created with the different stamps. Now, happy Christmas crafting, um, and I am just excited to see what you guys do with all of this stuff when it arrives at your door. Someone said, yeah, we just need those inks now. Yes, those inks are going to be coming. Um, we are working out our issue, and as soon as we can get them out, we will with maybe even more colors than just two, so yeah. Well, guys, have a wonderful day and rest of your evening, and um, hope you guys do a little bit of crafting today. Bye, guys. Thanks so much for joining me.